my name is Kelly Hobart and I'm here from Alpaca Direct and it's so nice to be with you today on Facebook Live. And so today we're going to be talking about this shawl that I'm wearing and it's called the Golden Hour. Do you see the back of it? Isn't that awesome? Let me take it off so you can see it better. So this is called Mosaic Knitting and I'll show you the um, back side of it as well as the front side. And it has a wonderful Pico bind off on the edge that takes absolutely forever. And this project has not been thoroughly blocked yet because I just finished it this morning. <laughs> Nothing like knitting something really quickly in about five days. So here it is here. And mosaic knitting is really easy to do. It is basically some slip stitches. And you see on the back you have kind of like floats and you can't really lock in the floats every other stitch on mosaic knitting because you're slipping the stitches. And how would you lock in that yarn if you're not actually knitting the stitch? So this is what you get on the back and there's not a whole lot to be done about it. I think it looks fine. I don't think there's gonna be a problem with it. And I wanted to show you the lovely bobbles on the front. And when I, we look at our bobbles today, what we're going to be looking at, if you look at the back here, on the back of the bobble here, how to get these bobbles closed so that your bobble doesn't sink through the back. So, um, the bobbles have a tendency, if that hole is too big, they'll just slip right through the back side. And it kind of looks funny if your bobble disappears on the wrong side of your work, and that's not cool. So I'll show you how I make mine stand out and close up that hole a bit so that you don't have to worry about that with your bobbles when you have them. Also, we're gonna be talking about in the front on here. Jim, if you zoom in on this part right here, it's called a garter tab cast on that Andrea Mowry um, uses for this pattern. And it kind of, when you start it with, um, you cast on three stitches and you knit seven rows and then you pick up three st stitches around the top and then you pick up three stitches around that cast on the edge and I was looking at different ways that I can cast on to make this look prettier right here and so I'll show you what I kind of was doing and you can decide if it'll work for you but I think I thought it was pretty cool. Hey Kel, so, yes? so several people are coming in from the east coast. Hi, good morning. It's nice to have all Colorado of you here. Colorado and Virginia. And if you'll notice, we are on the road again. We are at uh, Las Vegas, and we're at the Magic Show, which is at one of the largest apparel shows in the world, and we're actually looking for products for Alpaca Direct. And so if you have any ideas for things that you want us to carry, please let us know, because we are going to be thoroughly shopping and researching what they might have here for us so that we can have it on Alpaca Direct. Clothing. Yes, and clothing, it's apparel. Mm -hmm. And anyways, so I'll put that down. All and right. Angela yes. from Minnesota says hi. Hi, Angela, good morning. And Cheryl, oh. Sherry from Colorado. Hi, Sherry from Colorado. I bet it's cool there. We're supposed to be getting some snow back home. I think when we get back home, it's going to go down to four degrees. So our wool items, the Golden Hour Shawl uh, by Andrea Mowry that I'm talking about today. Um, this is not a good picture of the copy. It was just the shop uh, copy that I was working from to knit a sample for the shop. But this is Andrea Mowry, and she is called, it's called Drea Knits. And we have that patterns for sale on Alpaca Direct. They're in print. Yes, and they're in print form, yes. The way Andrea Maori does it, she allows us to get the patterns and they are almost like coffee table books because they're so beautiful and they're in color printing. They're really beautiful. So anyways, if you're interested in getting a copy of the pattern that we're gonna be working on today, which is this beautiful shawl. And like I said, I did it in five days or so, maybe uh, less. I was also working on other projects, but it's fairly quick knit. Um, one thing that I did notice about this project is that um, she called her, the project asked for three different colors and the colors, um, each skein is about 220 yards, right Jim? Mm -hmm. That's what it was. And so I chose this Kenzie by Haiku and this is just my leftover yarn. And the reason why I love this yarn so much is that it has a lovely halo. 
Jim, is there any way to capture that on this? I'm not sure. Oh, it's um, New Zealand wool, and it is just gorgeous. And it has this little speckle, almost like a tweed there. effect to it. And it's really beautiful. Also, I wanted to give you a little hint. When I was getting ready to do, do this project, I was kind of in a hurry, and I was, I, I was just wanting to get the job done. And I'm like, how can I pick out colors that would look nice together and do it quickly? And so I just wanted to point out to you, this, all three of these colors have blue in them, the teal color. And so this one, the white color, it's almost like a grayish blue. It's kind of a cool color. And so what I did is I took basically a lighter tint. So this is our darkest color. And then if you add white to the color, you would go down to something like this. It gets lighter and lighter as we go. So if that is a really easy way to choose colors if you're in a hurry and you're not wanting to be super creative but you want your project to look beautiful, um, you can just choose colors that are in uh, very similar to each other and just um, some are lighter than the others. And so that's what I did with mine. But this Kenzie, this Kenzie has 160 yards on it and it is, like I said, New Zealand Merino and it's 25% nylon, 10% angora, 10% alpaca, and 5% silk. And I've used this yarn. It has kind of a nice twist on it, sturdy, and I think that it makes, I have gloves that I made from it, and I love them. Um, I've worn them for like a year and a half, and they're holding up very, very well. But this yarn is a workhorse yarn that is really super nice yarn. And so for this golden hour, I use two skeins each, and this is what I have left. Mind you, it was 160 yards for each skein, so. Um, you were worried about the dark one running out. Yes, I was worried about bind my bind off because the bind off took so much yarn for that Pico bind off because it was cast on two, bind off four, and it was 300 and more, about 366 stitches or something like that. So it took a lot of yarn. There was. This was nearly full, not exactly full, but pretty full when I started and look how empty it is. So in um, the green yarn, the darkest color, I used, um, what was it, 150 for two skeins would be 300. So I used um, 320, almost a full 320 yards of yarn, not quite maybe. But anyways, it was a lot of yarn. So just make sure that uh, when you're doing yours that you leave plenty of yarn because you don't want to run out. Um, and as we're going along, if you want to share with others and post comments in the comment section, go ahead and do that. We love to hear from you and I love learning from you too. I get great ideas from other knitters and um, my staff members are really good. They're the ones that chose this golden hour and the reason why this pattern is so beautiful, well, Andrea Maori is a very, very popular designer nowadays and um, she does a wonderful job with her patterns and this is one of her newer uh, patterns that she has and so I, it was really fun. It has just enough going on to keep you interested but not so much going on that you can have a difficult time making it. it I think you should wear it to the fashion show today. Since yes, you're gonna Jim be... wants me to wear it today. I'm like, oh, what if I snag it? And anyways, I, I probably will end up wearing it just because Jim wants me to. I don't really want to ruin it, but... <clears throat> you worked hard on it. I will do that uh, if it makes him happy, whatever makes him happy. So anyways, all right. Also, another thing that I wanted to mention for last week, we had Sueno, two skeins of uh, That's this Sueno. Week. No, but last week it was for two skeins of Sueno, which okay. is this yarn. And this is the yarn that I'm using for my Building Blocks pattern uh, book from uh, Michelle Hunter. And this is the prize for this week. And all you have to do is post comments in the comment section and let us know what you're working on. And maybe share whatever you'd like to share with us because we love hearing from you. And of course share with others if you think this will help them. Um, and you this, have the new videos on those too, remember? On the building blocks? Mm -hmm. The yeah. seaming, remember? Oh yes, I have a bunch of new videos always coming out. I tried, I've been doing about three a week, I think, so we have quite a bit about. 
the one thing I wanted to say about I'm doing my building blocks uh, pattern in block um, all in strips. Now this book has little squares that you can do, but I've chosen to have half the seaming and do blocks of six tall. So what I did is I'm gonna this pattern book only gives you 13 blocks. Well, I'm going to need um, 24 blocks for mine. So what I did, if you look right here, can you see this pattern right here? I'm adding blocks of my own. So I'm just um, taking patterns that I love. I told you before I love this uh, Japanese knitting stitch Bible. And what it was is there was this pattern on Ravelry that was a shawl and it was just gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, I love that shawl. And then she happened to mention down on the bottom. Well, um, she had gotten the pattern from this Japanese knitting stitch uh, Bible. And I'm like, great. So I went out and purchased it real quick so I could have all the lovely patterns. So if any of you like this type of um, knitting, this is really, really beautiful book. I love it. Anyways, so I'm making my own extra blocks to go along here. And this one looks like it's the cable one on the bottom is sucked in a little bit, but when it gets blocked out, it's gonna, uh, it'll be the same size. So anyways, very exciting. I'm having fun. As usual, this Sueno from Haiku is a lovely yarn. If you haven't tried it, it's a Merino Bamboo Blend, 80-20 blend, and it is fantastic. I've used it for quite a few projects now, and I love it because it's machine washable too. So for our little Afghans, it's good to have it machine washable. So now, um, I think what we're gonna do, Jim, I'm gonna show them real quick what these baubles look like here. Mm -hmm. So we have these baubles up on top. So when you make a bauble, you basically increase from one stitch to five stitches, and then you knit a few rows, and then you have to decrease it back down to one stitch before you go on. Well, a lot of baubles, they'll go, um, when they start the decreasing, it'll be a series of five stitches and it'll be knit two together, knit one, knit two together. And then you turn your work and then it'll say purl three together. Well, that makes your bobble lean. So I don't really like leaning. I want my bobbles to sit straight up. So I'm going to show you a little method that I use, um, for, to make that happen. So Jim, I'm going to come around here. Okay. And I'm going to grab this chair. Um, it's right behind you. I don't want to hit I just have it. Leg. I'm showing them your new sign you made. Oh, yes. We made it out of PVC pipe, so it's lightweight and we can take it with us. We used to own a seven-acre ranch, and so uh, since my hubby was gone all the time, I learned how to make all kinds of stuff. And PVC pipe, I had stacks of PVC pipe because we had miles and miles of uh, irrigation pipe. So um, I used that all the time, so I used it to make a sign. So here's a bobble, and this is what I'm talking about. So if you look at it, it is straight, and it looks really good with the hole in the back is nicely closed. So I'm gonna get knit a few stitches away from it and show you how I like to do mine. So in Andrea Maori, she did knit front and back, knit front and back. That's four stitches. I prefer to have five stitches because then when I decrease, I keep that center stitch straight and decrease on either side of it so that I have that odd stitch in the center to make it decrease straight up, okay? So I do mine knit, yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit. So then we have in one stitch, we now have five stitches. Then you turn your work. And this is also called a reverse stock net stitch and that is because the purl bumps are showing on the right side of your work. So I'm purling, I'm knitting across here, which is gonna give me uh, purl bumps there. And then I turn my work again. Then I'm going to purl across the five stitches. So I'm just creating a bulk so I can turn it into a bobble. <laughs> it's basically what you do. And it's used for decoration and uh, bobbles are nice, I like them. And so, anyway, so now here's, where we do that knit two together, knit one, knit two together. So we're gonna go knit two together, knit one, oops, and knit two together. Now don't mind my needles because when I'm traveling, I can only bring a few things with me. And so 
I sometimes my needles aren't ideal but it's what I have so I make do so here's where it's different than other bubbles so I would take the first two stitches and transfer it over from the left hand needle to the right hand needle and then I'm not going to work them what I'm going to do is just bind off one then I'm going to take that stitch that's on the needle and transfer it over to the left hand needle now I'm going to take my working yarn and put it in the back then I am going to bind off this last stitch. Did you see how I left my center stitches maintained straight up? And then you take your bobble and you turn it inside out so it's facing the right way. Now this is very crucial. When you knit this first two stitches, tighten them up. Tighten them really tight. That's how, what closes the hole in the back. And on the next stitch, tighten it up. And then you have these lovely little bobbles that are sit standing straight up and the hole in the back is very minimal. So when you come back on your purl round, you'll make sure that you tighten up those two stitches. But other than that, that's all that's different about this bobble, but it stands up nice and straight and it looks beautiful. So that's how I prefer to do my bobbles. Now we had another problem with this pattern. <laughs> Not a problem, but... Um, on the garter tab. A garter tab is used when you're first casting on. What it does is it maintains this garter stitch all along here. So you're casting on right here. And if you look at this one section right there, it kind of looks a little tiny bit sloppy. So I'm sitting here going, how can I do a garter tab that is easy to cast on and not do a provisional cast on? So here's what I came up with. So I used Judy's Magic Cast On. Oops, turned the wrong way. I used Judy's Magic Cast On right here, and it gave me pearl bumps. So when this is actually done, and I would, and then I have the three stitches, I've already knit my seven rows. So I would take this pearl bump and then knit this one. And then on the next one, I find my next pearl bump in the same exact spot as I picked up on the other one and just transfer that over to my left hand needle and knit it. And then one last pearl bump. And I would knit that. And then I would go ahead and knit these. And you're all cast on. So what Oops. did it do? On, what it did is it, it took away that ridge in the back of it that makes it kind of funny looking. Yeah, and this one, you can see this stitch is mounted correct incorrectly. It's uh, twisted, so just knit it in the back loop. And that one the same. So now you're all casted on, and it has garter stitch throughout the whole thing. And it won't have that bump. It won't have this funny, it won't have that funny bump right there. So it's kind of cool. So let me just show you the part where I, just the part where I cast on. Sorry, I got my working yarn caught up in the shawl. Let me take this out so we can do it. I'm just going to leave that yarn on the floor because it, it was used a few times. Mm. So you know how you do Judy's Magic Cast On? And this is just showing you how you can cast on using the technique that I had. So you use Judy's Magic Cast On, and we use it for two at a time toe up socks, but you can use it for all kinds of stuff. And this top finger loads the bottom ne needle, and the bottom finger loads the top needle. So what you do is normally you go like that, but what I want you to do is go like that. So instead of going outside in, go inside out, because it's gonna give me the pearl bumps that I need to be able to do that cast on, or uh, to do the tab and have that garter stitch maintained. So that goes regular, and this one goes like that. And then uh, this one goes inside out, like you normally would, and that one goes outside in. And that's all you do. That That's the only thing that's different. So then, we have that row right there. And if you look back here, see how we have so these ones are knit stitches, and these ones in the back here, these ones are going to be pearls. Those are going to be pearl bumps and knit stitches. So that's all you do.
as you just start knitting. Hang on, let's over here. Sorry, honey, am I pulling it toward me? There you go. Yep, and then you knit. Then you would knit seven rows. One second here. Let's slide this in. Find your working yarn again, actually. Two. Sorry, these cords are so long. This was this these needles that I have in my hand right now are the needles I actually used to make the Andrea Maori shawl, and I actually needed the cords that long. So I'm trying to use them for this demo today, and the cords are like everywhere in my space. But it's all good. So you would just keep knitting along like that. <sighs> Sorry, Jim. Oh, what a mess. Great. It's okay. Sorry, sweetie. I have my tail is down on the floor. All right. Well, it's not going to want to be untangled. But you can see how we have the, it, it started here. So that's how you do a garter tab using Judy's Magic Cast On. And I'll do a video on it so it's clear. Yeah, we'll have a blog post on all your hacks. Yes. So that you can, I can clearly show you how to make it. But it's pretty cool. It makes no seam up at the top. And then um, it's a great way to cast on. And then you have your garter tab that has, that looks like that. It'll look like that instead of having this little edge right here. So I'll do a YouTube video on it. And you can see it more clearly and learn how to do it. In the meantime, that is how you do that garter tub. So I had a great time doing this shawl with a lovely Kenzie from Haiku or Skissel. And this was a great pattern. You can find it on Apaka Direct for sale. They want to and see the back side of it too. Oh yes, totally. I'll show you the back side again. This is called Mosaic Knitting, which is basically slip stitches. And this has not been blocked. I literally just pulled it off the needles this morning. And so it needs to be blocked, but you can see that it's fairly easy knit and the bobbles are super, super fun to make. The only other thing I would uh, recommend about this shawl is when she did hers, she was gonna have you bind off right at the, the first row of the white and the white kind of showed pearl bumps. So what I did is I did a one, uh, I knit back and forth one more time and then I did the bind off and it looks much better, don't you think, Jim? Mm -hmm. The other way it was, the white was showing through the bind off and it didn't look as good. But if you're gonna do this, angle it so if you're gonna do this, make sure that you have enough yarn to do it because like I said, um, if you knit two additional rows in garter stitch and then you try to bind off, you might run out of yarn before you run out of bind off stitches to do because boy, the Pico bind off requires a ton of yarn and I was totally surprised at how much yarn it takes. So let's talk about who the winner was for this last week and it was not for, it was this brand of yarn but it's in a more of a lilac color and this is Sueno and it was for two, two skeins of that and the winner is uh, Marilyn Lee. Congratulations Marilyn Lee, you won. So what you do is you go to customer service at apacadirect.com and give us your shipping address and we can send your swine out in the mail to you. And you will totally love that yarn. I love it, it's fantastic. And let them and, know how they can win too. And so for the for person this week, they are gonna be entering to win this Building Blocks book. And the reason why I think it's so fantastic is Michelle Hunter is a phenomenal instructor. Um, she spent almost her entire life teaching and then she retired and when she retired, she started knitting. And so she uses her expertise at teaching um, to teach us how to knit. So she is totally a fantastic teacher and she has three books. She had Building and Color, Building with Lace and the this Building Blocks right here um, that you can purchase. And those are all of, for sale on Alpaca Direct. 
so you can get them there. Um, was there anything else that I missed, Jim? Oh, this next week, we are going to be talking about another one of Michelle Hunter's books. And the book that I'm going to be talking about is Building in Color. And we have had in the past um, a couple of our customers say that they had a difficult time getting those strips put together because it involves different patterns and some of the patterns are really stretchy and block way out and get really big and other of the strips are less stretchy because they have slip stitches and so they don't block as well so some strips are really long and some are really short and I'm going to show you how you can easily get those blocks put together and have fun doing it. So we're going to be talking about that next week and like I said, I'm here in Las Vegas and we are going to the magic show looking for products for Alpaca Direct. So thank you for bearing with us this week and while we're on the road and we will see you next Tuesday at 9.30 a.m.